Welcome to Goldfish on Games and Budget Game Reviews. Today's subject of a cheap review is this, the Spider-Man Plug and Play Device by Jack Pacific. Now, this thing is connected to your TV via a composite and a single audio channel, so it's completely mono, and it has a joystick, which comes out of Spider-Man's head. Yeah, that seems like great design. It has three main buttons, A, B, and, well, I'd call it C, but it looks like a spider instead, so let's say it's the spider button. Along the back, we have got a power switch, power LED, a reset button, and a menu button. And underneath, under this flap, is where the batteries go. This is entirely powered by batteries. So, let's try it out, shall we, and see how good it is. And when you turn it on, you end up with this, the main menu. That gives you the option of five different games. Now, I decided to show it off on the TV first because, well, the video quality out of this thing is pretty appalling, and that's with it having composite outputs. And while the TV does its best job of trying to smooth everything out, it's still pretty bad here, and it gets even worse when we move over to the direct capture, so please keep that in mind. All five of the games are quite unique. In this first one, Streets of the City, has you web-slinging around trying to do various tasks. On the first set of levels, you've got to try and find the stolen money, and there'll be plenty of bad guys in the way to make it hard for you. But because you're Spider-Man, you can use your web to stop them, or you can even go up and punch them. Though it does feel like it takes a little while for the baddies to realise that they've been punched, as they seem to take an age to fall down. Thankfully, the web slinging mostly works, though it does seem to set you further down than you'd expect. And you can climb on pretty much any surface, which is pretty cool. It's just a pity everything feels a bit slow and laggy for my tastes. There are a few pickups for you to find, including extra lives, more health, more webbing, there's even additional armour, as well as one that can only be described as a smart bomb, as it takes out anyone on the screen at that time. You can either die by losing all your health, or by... falling into water. For some reason, this Spider-Man can't swim. After you've completed a few levels, you'll get to face a boss, with the Rhino being the first one, and boy does he look like he's been pumping the steroids. Thankfully, the next set of missions do shake things up a little, as you have to go around defusing bombs, while avoiding people in the windows, or just beating them up, because they will get in your way if you don't. This is easily the most polished game in this entire collection, which really isn't saying much as we move on to the next title, which is Spider Training. Now, if you can just about make out the text on the screen, it's actually a target game and not you training to be a spider. Your goal is to shoot various villains that show up behind these panels. The villains are rimmed in red, the heroes are rimmed in blue, so don't hit the blue targets, just the red ones, and you can pretty much breeze through the first few levels, as the number of goals is pretty low to start off with and it gives you lots of opportunity. The real problem with this game is that the targeting reticule is very difficult to see on most of the pictures, and even harder to see when the panels are closed. To be honest, the hardest part of this game is the joystick, as this one is pretty loose. I don't know if all of them are, or if this one just happened to have a pretty abused life, but it's not that great. Also, what's not great is the limited number of pictures that they have. You thought they could have increased them as you went along, but I got up to about round 6 and didn't see any new ones, so either they were saving them for the much later rounds, or this is pretty much all you get. And I have to say, you're more likely to fail this game through either the joystick selecting the wrong panel, or you just getting bored and just giving up. So let's move on over to the next title, shall we? Which is called Venom's Vindication. Which, I take offence at that name because all he's doing is throwing bombs. How is that being vindicated in any way whatsoever? Spidey's goal is to use his web throwers to create a net just above the bombs as he's throwing them. If they latch on, then you win. If they fall to the ground, then a huge explosion happens and you lose health. 
all the while you'll have baddies coming across the screen who will try to stop you. And to be honest, those baddies are the hardest bit in this game, as they will block you if you don't take them down. The first few areas are pretty easy, there's only three areas where you'll throw the bombs and he doesn't try to get too tricky with it, and the baddies, well they will go down in a single punch. But the longer you go, the harder it will get, as you'll start to have more areas where you'll throw the bombs, and you'll start to actually look as if you'll throw it one way and then throw it somewhere else. He's a tricky one this Venom, and the villains wandering around at the bottom of the screen will take multiple hits to take down. So there's definitely more of a challenge here, even if the gameplay itself isn't all that great. I don't think it would have been quite so bad if it wasn't for the graphics. This looks like something that the 16-bit machines would have had no difficulty in producing, let alone other machines that were released at the same time in 2004. Though the next game does show that the developers could pull off something a bit fancier when they tried, in Escape from the Sewers which has this first person view and plays a bit like the old dungeon crawlers. Doom this isn't, but it is a pretty neat effect after what we've seen from this machine so far, and it might be pushing this a little too hard, as the music really sounds as if it's struggling to play at a proper speed, even though every so often it will suddenly go faster and then return to its slower speed, so I don't know if they purposely slowed it down, or if it is just the hardware crawling trying to draw this. Now it is a little unfortunate that they've spent so much time and effort on this 3D render, when most of the time you'll be just looking at the map, because what you've got to do is crawl around the sewers trying to find the bombs and then fire your web at them and destroy them. As you complete a level, the number of bombs will go up, which is then capped as about 15. As you have to traverse most of the maze anyway to find the randomly placed bombs, as the number increases, it doesn't actually get all that harder. The real difficulty is meant to come from the army of lizards that seem to traverse the maze. But to be honest, all you gotta do is web them once and quickly run away, and then they'll just vanish. So overall, it's not the hardest game, and there's no real variation to the graphics. Once you've seen one maze, you've pretty much seen all of them, which is a bit of a shame, as I wish they could have put a bit more variation into it. The last game in the collection, Vulture's Venture, is probably the hardest, and even if it looks like the graphic designer gave up halfway through. I mean, just look at that tank! It's just a couple of tracks with a ball. They put more effort into the Vulture, and he's barely on the screen half the time anyway. The game plays a bit like an upside down missile command, in which you have to use your webs to stop the missiles and the well, I hope they're eggs that are flying out of the vulture. If the projectile hits the weak spot on the girders at the same place a couple of times, it'll crack it. And if it cracks at both ends, then the whole thing will fall down with Spidey underneath it. Even though there really is only four targets on these earlier levels, I actually found it quite difficult to work out the trajectories that the missiles and the bombs were taking. I don't know if it's because it was upside down, but it really was messing with my head. And that is pretty much all five games, and just check out the high scores, all of which was gotten on my first serious attempt at playing the game, which basically translates to not hitting the menu button when I got bored, and I feel that wraps things up. And until next time, I was the Gouldfish, that was a man who could do whatever a spider can, and this was Gouldfish on Games. Thank you for watching this budget game review, I do hope you enjoyed it. And if you've got memories of this game, good or bad, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. And if you really enjoyed the video, then there's buttons below that you know what to do with. Or if you're not sure yet, then there's two other videos on screen that you can check out right now.